Okay, good morning everybody and, and welcome to this this SysOp event today where uh, I've got the, the pleasure of, of taking you through content related to the, the Service Desk Institute and, and the certification around that uh, and, and in particular the, uh, the, the Service Desk Institute uh, Analyst course and the Service Desk Institute Service Desk Managers course. Uh, so we're going to give you a bit of a uh, uh, a flavour for what's what's included within those uh, within those those particular qualifications. Um, in terms of how I'm running the webinar, you probably realised you're all muted. Uh, I can't see any of you guys, um, so I'm solely dependent on the the, the chat facility. So um, I want to actively encourage you guys to, uh, to 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 post any questions that you might have as as I go along. Um, I don't always tend to, to pick up on the questions as, as, as I go through, um, but what I will certainly do when I get to the end is that we'll have a, a Q&A session where I'll be able to uh, go through, uh, pick up on those questions and, uh, and, and answer any, any more that, uh, that, that may come up as we're, as we're going through the final stages of the session. Um, so my name is Adam Saul. I'm a, the Director of Professional Services at SysOp. Uh, and, and it's as I say, it's my pleasure to to bring this uh, this this update to you. Really, the the, the Services Institute qualification scheme has been around for a while, uh, but uh, there there was um, updates uh, launched at the turn of the year, which uh, which we are now live with in terms of our uh, our course materials and, and the content that that go with them. Um, <clears throat> I know I see some uh, very familiar names on, on the session, so so welcome back. Um, and also I see some names that, uh, that that perhaps haven't been on on our one of our sessions or one of our events before. So so welcome to, to all of you. Um, for those who of you who don't know, it's just a very brief introduction to to who SISAP are. Um, you know we are a, a, an IT service management or IT best practice specialist, really. Um, Founded back in back in eighty five, long before things like ITIL were born, um, but uh, we, we sort of started out as, um, as 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 a as a technology company actually providing uh, software development and and for the the, the ICL mainframe environment. Um, but in that, although the, the IT world was very different back then, IT best practice was uh, was was still needed to make sure that we had. Uh, the, the effective and efficient running of, of, of IT services. So you know, we, we, we bought into that back then. Um, I wasn't working for the organization then, but uh, um, around uh, 99, I, I joined the company. And at that point, very much, we were specialists in the area of, of IT service management. Um, we were an early adopter of, of ITIL. We, we sort of proudly declare that we are the, the longest established ITIL training provider in the world. Uh, we were one of the first ones uh, to, to jump on board and have been offering our services ever since. And one of the the, the main reasons for for our success is is that we we have a pragmatic approach. You know, we we want to make sure that um, that anybody who takes part in any of our services um, is ultimately realizing benefit that they can go back to the workplace and, and do something with. So we, we want to have a focus on organisational benefits um, and certainly an individual benefit in terms of people and their roles. Um, but that uh, has a nice positive knock-on effect that we, we happen to have um, an exceptionally high industry uh, examination success rate across, across the examination-based courses as well. So that, that tends to fit in well. Um, we like to think that we provide exceptional customer service. We, we, we sort of have evidence to back that up through uh, the feedback that we get from our students. We're, we are a family business. Um, some of you may um, may know that uh, you, you may know that it was my father Stuart Saul who founded the business back in '85. His partner Janice is our operations manager, and uh, will have uh, provided you all with the, the communications for, for today's session. So hopefully you'll continue to experience some good customer service as we go through through this particular session. Um, and a little bit about myself, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've had varied roles in in, in the, my time with Sysop. I would say I joined in '99 straight out of university. Um, but, but I've done the full 360 really. I, I've been at the sharp end um, providing installation and support services for uh, for technology solutions, mostly in and around the storage industry, so backups, storage area networks, that type of thing, um, right through to, uh, to working in a sales capacity, uh, providing advice and guidance on, on how best to, uh, how our clients can, can make the best use of our products and services. 
right around to where I am now, where uh, I am our lead ITIL4 uh, product lead, uh, the lead trainer. I've produced all of our, our ITIL4 course content, um, as well as some of our other products and services. So I now find myself um, sort of providing our training and consultancy services on, on, on an ongoing basis. Um, I'm particularly passionate about IT service management. Uh, I'm fairly sure that many of you guys are as well, and that's why you're um, keen to sort of explore and, and understand more about what the uh, the Services Institute and the, uh, the certifications bring to the party. Um, so I say I've, I've got you for an hour. I mean, I want, to, I want to reserve time at the end for some some questions that you, that you may have. So, uh, so I'm certainly not going to be uh, talking through through the full hour here. Um, so the, the the tail end is based on uh, the questions that you come up with. But we do have an agenda. I, I want to introduce the the, the Services Institute themselves. Uh, I don't, don't know whether you guys do any work with them already or not, but uh, it's the service desk institutes that, that, that provide the, the standards upon which the, the training qualification scheme is built around. So uh, we'll give you a bit of a background to who they are. We'll talk about certification generally in terms of uh, the, the, the service desk itself, uh, as well as um, certification for for the, uh, the the team, the analysts, the, the, the manager that are in and, in and around the, the the service desk function. Um, we'll look at the target audience for the training courses, the service desk analyst and the service desk manager. Uh, I'll take you through a bit more specifically what has changed in the latest updates. I'm sure we've got some people on the session who may even be uh, already certified in, in in some of these courses, and you're looking to really get an update on. Uh, on what has changed, so so we'll go through that. And one of the the significant changes is the alignment to ITIL four. So I'll also uh, get across how that fits in with uh, with with the latest developments around ITIL four and, uh, and and sort of demonstrate to you how how the Services Institute and and, and ITIL uh, kind of go hand in hand in terms of uh, approaches for, for for best practice from a service management perspective. And then, as I say, we'll finish with uh, a Q and A session. Uh, happy to, to field any questions that you've got, and as I've already said, post them into the chat as we go. If uh, so, you don't uh, you don't have to sit on them and hold back. Um, I may pick them up as we go, but uh, if not, I'll definitely pick them up in, when we get to the relevant section. Okay, so uh, some information in and around who the Service Desk Institute are. Well, they're um, as I say, they're they're, they're a, a Service Desk specialist organisation that they focus on. Uh, community uh, that they, they want to to, to um, reach out to, to to the IT industry and, and the service desks in particular, uh, and, and they're, they're driving this specific mission to inspire service desks to be brilliant. I mean, I mean, ultimately, that's that's what it's all about for them. That there's general recognition that uh, that the um, that because the service desk is is the face of, of IT to to the business. Uh, it has a, a huge representation on the the overall um, quality, the, the the perception of the quality of the of the IT services that, that are being provided to, to to businesses and customers alike. So we want to make sure that we have uh, an effective service desk, and the Service Desk Institute themselves are particularly passionate about about driving that. Um, so they do that in a number of ways. They embrace best practice to raise the quality of service delivery. Um, not only uh, do they produce the standard uh, for, for for service desk institute um, manager and analyst, they're also able to sort of certify the, uh, the 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 level of service being provided by the service desk, and we'll talk more about that shortly. Um, engage with customers to create an inspiring and engaging service experience. I mean, ultimately, this this is what it's what it's all about. Uh, we're, we're definitely moving more into customer experience as being the the, the key requirement, um, and uh, and so some of the updates have picked up on on that one when we get to that particular section. Uh, invest in and empower teams to be inspired, take action, and be better. Yeah, I mean, it's, this is all about uh, people, and we've got processes to give people guidance, but we want to make sure that. Uh, that the service test teams are empowered to provide the best possible service that they can and shine by demonstrating and delivering exceptional business value because ultimately this is what it's all about we're there to 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 provide the business with with a service um, we're there to provide support services for for for, for it um, but but perhaps more than that we also want to work with with the business to make sure that we understand their challenges um, 
and to make sure that we, we gear up the, the level of support for, for, for the needs that they actually have. So, uh, so so we want to factor all of that in. So those those are the key um, mission statements from, from the Services Institute. Um, I've mentioned a few times that, um, that about the term certification, and, and uh, today we're talking about certification in terms of certifying the service desk itself, as well as potentially certifying uh, the individuals in the in, with the training qualifications that we're going to cover in, in more detail. Um, but just to, to, to sort of uh, go through this, so the Service Desk Institute, they are actually able to, because they've defined the standards for the service desk, then they're able to provide uh, assessment, audit and assessment services to be able to establish um, the level of, of, of performance that, that your service desk may or, or may not have. And um, the, this programme is it's the only industry standard based accreditation programme which is designed specifically to, cer to certify the service desk quality. So um, there are things like ISO 20000 out there, which, which is sort of a more broader um, audit standard approach to, to service management. But if you're looking at, um, at the specific service desk, then this is the, the, the unique program out there. And it provides a clear measurable benchmark for, for IT service operations really. In the bottom right hand corner there on the slide, you can see that, uh, that the, they have a maturity level star rating system. Um, so we're looking, with, with it being a standard, we're looking to sort of comply and conform to uh, to, to the guidelines that, uh, that that they outline, and they're able to, to to audit and assess your service desk to establish whether whether you have a reactive service desk, proactive, customer led, business led, or world class. And obviously, that that you can see from the the slide there comes with with a star rating. Now, why would you want to do that? I mean, for, first of all, um, we're we're looking to establish professionalism in our organisation. We're looking to demonstrate to to the business. Uh, the, the the value of the service desk. And we want to make sure that that we are we are business led, that we are supporting business requirements. So in order to uh, to go through this certification program and, and receive that, that that stamp that actually we are doing things in the right way, uh, it provides us with 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 many many benefits. Um, I'm going to cover that more on on the next slide. But really, just to to cover this off. Um, you know, we're looking to, to demonstrate alignment to industry best practice. We're looking to uh, demonstrate to the business the, uh, the 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 return on investment of having a quality service desk, making sure that our our, our calls are, are closed off as quickly as we possibly can, making sure that we don't lose things, making sure that we have an effective knowledge base for for people for for our service desk team to to use, making sure that we're sharing that information. Lots and lots of things that we want to establish as a good best practice. Um, and, and this this standard uh, uh, alignment to the standard helps us with that. Gives us a driver for continual service improvement and, and skills development, and helps to improve the customer perception and, and, and the overall customer experience, which ultimately is, is is what it's all about. So the next slide just kind of gives you a bit more of a flavour for what value can can the service desk certification bring to to, to your organisation. Um, the stats running up the left hand side there are, uh, are taken from the, the Services Institute's website. So, so some uh, recent surveys that they've they've run uh, and those people who are participating in the program, 100 percent of them have said that it's enabled them to, to, to better articulate and promote the value of their service desk. Um, it's one thing recognizing that we have a, a good service desk service that, that we're providing to the business, but to actually have a, an independent review um, allocate a star rating based on how well we're doing um, often is uh, uh, makes that perception for the business much clearer. 78% um, said that as a result of certification, they have experienced improved trust, confidence, credibility in their service capability. Yeah, again, you know, improving perceptions, improving trust, confidence. 77% saw improvement in reporting capabilities first in, since first engaging in the in the um, service desk certification program. Well, obviously, if we're if we're looking to to establish a, a best practice approach, we want to be able to uh, demonstrate and understand what what good looks like. Measurements and metrics form a key part of that, and, and having um, reporting capabilities gives us some sanity that we're we're moving things in the right direction. And 100% said that the reports they received provided valuable information to enable them on their improvement journey. So, yeah, all of this this independent review of, of how we're doing things uh, enables us to, uh, to, to to sort of have a better picture of where we're going from, provide a springboard for us to um, 
to, to, to identify improvement initiatives, but also gives us a frame of reference to to, to compare how well we've 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 moved things forward after uh, after a period of time. Um, so all those things indicate that this this is this is good stuff for us to be looking at. Um, I'm not going to go through through all of these points here, but just to sort of say, you know, we want to be business focused. We want to be looking at continual improvement. We want to be able to to differentiate our organisation from from others. Certainly, it sort of seems uh, perhaps more relevant if your business is one where you are a managed IT service provider. Um, then certainly being able to sell your services by indicating that you have a, a world class service desk uh, is a very positive message. But also internally, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, demonstrating to the to, to the business overall um, how well we, how well we're supporting them, um, and, and this certification and having a star rating enables us to, to truly uh, um, get that message across of of, of how well we're, we're performing overall. So lots of good reasons why you might want to look at the uh, the, the service desk certification scheme. Um, uh, the certification is based on open international and an open international industry standard. So just to sort of uh, go through what we mean by that, uh, it's open, it's 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 published, it's out in the public domain. You can sort of go and look on the, the Service Desk Institute's website and, and download the standards and have a look for yourself. Um, that will enable you to to improve your services uh, without necessarily uh, uh, embarking on a sort of a formal process of audit. You can take a look at that and see, see how you stand, but obviously, um, to, to, to achieve the star rating, you need to have that uh, that, that individual assessment. Um, it allows individuals who are perhaps looking to, to go down the qualification route, it's open, it's available for you to study for, for the exam through, the, through training providers, um, and it enables training providers and consultancy providers such as SysOp to develop offerings that align with the standard, and that's why, you know, we, we uh, uh, <clears throat> not only do we offer the, the Services Institute's qualification courses, but a lot of this best practice we do embed into some of our uh, our workshops and things that, that that we provide, which are perhaps a little bit more specific and niche. Um, it's international. It's recognised worldwide. It's been developed by uh, a team of, of IT professionals um, from all over the globe, and certainly the latest update has uh, that, that it was they were very deliberate to make sure that there was representation from sort of all corners of the earth. Um, <clears throat> The, the industry, we're sort of referring to IT industry, the, the, there's a focus on uh, support of information technology. We're looking at uh, uh, external support organisations, you know, those managed service providers. We're looking at shared service environments, general service providers. It kind of covers that whole gambit of, uh, of, of, of IT organisations where there is there's a service desk uh, as, as part of the services that we're providing. Um, and the standard, you know, the, we, we talk about the term standard being been quite prescriptive, as in, you know, we, we, we're demonstrating what best practice looks like. Um, and if you wanted to go down the route of being assessed, then of course you've got to demonstrate that, that you comply with the guidance provided through those standards. So the standards are there to define the knowledge that a support professional in a specific role is expected to know, and there's a set of best practices within a service desk. So it's a standard for for, for overall service desk performance. There's a standard for for the, the the role of a service desk analyst, and there is a standard for the role of the, the service desk manager for us to uh, um, to have have a look at and try and ensure that we're we're in compliance with uh, with with those guidelines. So in terms of the, the, the two training qualifications that, uh, that, I've, that I've mentioned a few times now, there is the uh, SDI Service Desk Analyst, SDI Service Desk Institute, and the SDI Service Desk Manager. So they, they have these, these specific objectives here on, on the slide. Um, and it, it can, this kind of neatly demonstrates how these courses break down, actually. So um, there's an awful lot in and around Roles and responsibilities. What what it what it what you would expect to see a professional. Uh, what skills you'd expect them to have if they're operating in these roles. Uh, and obviously, we're, we're, with it being training, if they haven't got them, then we're looking to to introduce these skills and uh, and help them develop. Um, whilst recognising that uh, that the softer side of developing skills and, and understanding professionalism is quite key. Um, service desk practices are, are, are often underpinned by, by processes and procedures that uh, 
that we have within that. And, and, and you'll see shortly when I go through these sections, those of you who, who are aware of, of ITIL and certainly ITIL 4, um, you'll see that, uh, that, 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 that there is complete alignment with, with some of the approaches that the ITIL has, has introduced. So when we're talking about service test processes, um, it's good to see that we're, we're not conflicting. We're, we're trying to establish uh, a common language across the industry um, and the Services Institute, I'm pleased to see, has, has complete alignment with, with the ITIL framework. Um, and of course, we're dependent on uh, on tools and technologies to help us in, in, in our roles. So, um, so, so key part of the course is understanding uh, how we can use those those tools, not just the service desk tool itself, but how we can use things like social media and automation and artificial intelligence and, and, and all of those aspects. Um, much of what you cover on the, the analyst uh, in terms of the objectives, there's a fair bit of synergy as well going on to, on to the managed, but obviously you're looking at it from a different perspective. Analyst is all about the, those that are doing the, the, the service desk analyst work, um, whereas when we move into the manager role, then it's all about managing a team of people who are, are operating within those things. Um, so we're a little bit more strategic. You know, we're looking at um, aligning the, the, the service desk services to ensure that it's in support of, of business objectives and business strategy. So that, that's a key part of that. Um, we want to look at skills and competencies like we do with analysts, but the emphasis is now on leadership and management and, and you know how we can empower and motivate staff to, uh, to, 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 to perform at their highest level on, on the desk. Um, looking at how we interface with, uh, with, with with other departments from a service desk perspective, look at other processes. Um, so we'll, again, we're looking at the bigger picture of IT. We're not just specifically looking at, uh, at the service desk itself. And, and in many ways, that's why when we look at um, who, who this course is, is appropriate for, then um, we, we are looking at uh, not just uh, the service desk manager in particular, but operations managers, uh, team leaders, all of those aspects would, would benefit from, from the training. Uh, and again, you know, uh, perhaps even in much more detail, we'll look at processes, we'll look at the, the ITIL 4 framework processes, practices that, that help support the, 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 the service desk and we cover a fair bit of that on, the, on these particular qualifications. So, um, so the service desk analyst, just to give you a flavour of, of sort of structure and things, it's a three-day training course. Uh, as you you might expect, um, the, the the target audience, if it's service desk analyst, then uh, we're looking at frontline IT service and, and support analysts. Um, I think that, that it was it's fair to say that this this course is appropriate for for anybody who's who's uh, operating in, in those roles, whether they've just joined the organisation, just joined this this role or, or not. It's it's kind of gives them a good flavour of um, you know, the softer skills that they need to do the role and, and some of the more uh, uh, process specific things to give them a good flavour for why those why those uh, processes and procedures exist across the organisation. Um, it's appropriate for large, medium, and small size service desks. You know, it's not it's not size dependent. Um, so it could be that you have one person on a service desk, a, a very small organisation, um, and that it would be appropriate for them to attend right up to a a, a desk or, or multiple service desks across an organisation with many many staff on there. And the, the course is there to help panelists to, to to grow into their role, develop practical skills, and gain a, a, a recognised qualification. Um, now, it doesn't say on there details about the exam. I sort of realised this morning that uh, uh, it perhaps should do, but just to, to share that with you. This is the service desk analyst. Um, obviously, it, it's a qualification course, so it comes with, with an exam. Um, it's a 60 minute exam of 60 multiple choice questions. Uh, so, fairly straightforward multiple choice, as in, you know, you've got four potential answers of those four one is correct and three are incorrect. Um, and you need to get 39 out of 60 to, to score a pass, which is which is 65%. Um, so the pass rate across this course is, is, is quite high, as you might expect. We want most people to, to be able to, to achieve a pass. Sadly, we can't guarantee that everybody will, but uh, but the vast majority do. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's fairly straightforward. <clears throat> and in terms of the specific content that's that's covered on this this is really just just for reference i don't don't want to go through each of these bullet points but to give you a flavor of the the, the structure of the course there are four main areas professionalism and roles analyst skills practices processes and procedures and resources and the percentages that are on there give you a, an indication of uh, 
of, of how much of the uh, the content and how much of the exam is geared towards those particular sections. So you can see that the two biggest ones are in and around the, the, the analytical skills that you would want somebody to have. And, and you know, it's not just analytical skills, actually, it's, it's also uh, good communication skills. I mean, the key aspect here within, within a, uh, an SDI support analyst is that we're, we're looking to provide good customer service. We want to be able to ensure that we're, we're able to um, engage with, with users. Uh, we're able to, to, to to be empathetic to them, uh, we're able to change the way that we, we deal with with users if there is, uh, you know, altering our approach from somebody who's who's angry and putting in a, a furious complaints right through to somebody who's just re requesting a simple change uh, or whatever it might all be. So, you know, good communication skills, uh, problem solving, conflict and negotiation skills, all examples of the things that we talk about there. Time management and resilience is, is a good one. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that shortly, but uh, you know, just looking at how, how we handle stress generally, because th th these roles can be stressful, certainly when we're, we're putting pressures on to, uh, to, to fix things that, that have gone wrong, whether it be from, from users or, uh, or to the wider organisation, we need to be, uh, be able to, to adapt and, and, and support uh, the team to, to cope with those things. Um, the other large section is practices, processes and procedures and um, let's say if any of you have done any ITIL 4 training or even just, just uh, any ITIL uh, version 3 or, or earlier, uh, a lot of these terms you'll, you'll recognise like incident management, request management, those things, service level management. So you can see that there is complete alignment to, to, to ITIL and, and, and ITIL 4. Um, so, uh, so we are getting those, those key messages across and actually whilst I'm talking about that I often get asked the question, and some of you may be thinking about this, um, if if you were looking at service desk analysts and trying to identify an appropriate training course for, for them to go on, and, and you, you're, you're perhaps contemplating ITIL 4 Foundation against the, uh, the, the, the Service Desk Institute support analyst course, well, you can take some comfort that actually if you opted for the Service Desk Institute's qualifications, then you are covering off a whole chunk of the, uh, the the ITIL practices anyway. So in many ways, this is more specific to the role of, of a service desk analyst. And I'd probably recommend that you looked at this course um, over and above the ITIL 4 Foundation if, if your objective was specifically to, um, to, to, to give somebody on the service desk uh, a greater awareness and understanding of, of things that are in and around their role. Um, because the flip side of that is that the the ITIL 4 Foundation course itself, um, there's an awful lot of concepts that we that we introduce. Um, so, uh, we'll I'll cover off one of those shortly. But uh, but we're not specifically focused on on the skills that you need to do these roles. So so I think this is perhaps a more of a pragmatic approach. Is my is my own personal view. So uh, you may want to do both because um, although there's overlap. Uh, because this focuses on skills and because the ITIL 4 Foundation courses focuses on, 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 I suppose, the foundation of ITIL, you know, the, 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 the models and concepts that are there, uh, which aren't covered on the SDI Analyst course, but they both do cover the practices. And arguably, I'd suggest that the SDI Analyst course covers these practices in more detail as well. So, uh, so something for you to, to be aware of. And not ignoring the other two areas because they're, they're not that's only 30% of the course, but it's still a significant amount. Establishing professionalism, uh, looking at the role of a service desk analyst, um, attitude, teamwork, all of these things would make a good professional uh, support analyst. So we have a look at that. And we look at the resources, and by resources, we're looking at tools really and how we can use things like self-service, um, the emergence of automation and, and artificial intelligence, as well as uh, uh, social media as, as, as resources that could, could help us from a, from a service desk perspective. So that's, that was the analyst course. So now moving on to the, the service desk manager. So this is a four day training course, um, target audience, existing and aspiring managers. So you don't have to be somebody who is, who is a service desk manager to attend this course. It might be that you're 
um, you've got somebody on the service desk who you recognise has the potential um, and you want to give them support so that they can grow. So that this would be a good course for them to be looking at. Um, there is a, a stated uh, sort of prerequisite that, uh, that somebody should have three years experience in a service desk environment. Now that doesn't mean to say that they have, need to have three years experience as being a service desk manager. They just have to have been operating in uh, in the um, in, in the service desk space and actually they we, we've got examples of the types of people that would want to to consider this particular course um, just slightly misleading as I'm, as I'm introducing this this isn't suggesting that that you have to have experience in these roles what we're saying here is these are just the types of roles that might be interested in the, in the qualification just any anybody who's who's got uh, who's been on a service desk for three years would qualify for that initial prerequisite but team leaders supervisors service desk managers support managers service delivery managers customer service managers service managers they're all sort of team leader type roles but as i mentioned earlier i would, I would also say that you can add aspiring managers into that list people that you think have the potential to, uh, to to grow and develop into these roles would uh, would benefit from this course as well, and it helps managers to pursue employment uh, and advancement opportunities in service and support. Really, you know, we're looking to uh, to, to pr provide a, a rounded understanding of, of of what it takes to be a service desk manager, um, and the qualification itself means that uh, uh, from an individual point of view, you, you've got uh, a tick in the box to say that that, that you you've got a high level of understanding in this area, um, and that will help you if if you're looking at potentially moving uh, from one organisation to another, um, or and or it will help you with. Uh, developing in your own organisation as you, you provide a, ultimately a, an improved service and support service to the business. So what's covered on the service desk manager course then? Well, it breaks down into these six areas, um, policy and strategy, leadership and management, people management, resources, practices, processes and procedures, management information and performance results. And you can sort of see the Sort of the breakdown there. There's kind of more of an even split, I would say, between 15 and 20 percent across across all of these things. And just to give you a, a flavour of what we mean by each of those sections, so policy and strategy, looking at, um, at, at the, the the service desk as a practice, trying to understand um, visions sort of business strategic direction and, and how we can make sure that what we're doing on the service desk is in complete alignment with those things. Uh, looking at sourcing models and, and, and financial management as being sort of a key a key feed into that. Um, leadership and management, as I say, this is all about uh, skills again, but from, from a management perspective. So uh, yeah, looking at, uh, uh, at how the, the skills that we would need, how we can manage a team, um, how we can empower uh, the, the 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 service desk team to, to operate at the, the most efficient and effective level. Um, Things like organisational change management, we cover on this. You know, so recognising that uh, if we're looking to introduce significant change, then there's the steps that we need to do to uh, to, to ensure success with that approach. Um, you know, we've got to recognise that we need to pe bring people along the journey. Uh, we need to recognise how we're going to go about doing that. Uh, people management, of course, a lot of people management involved in this service desk manager capacity. So looking at recruitment, looking at uh, professional development, uh, looking at overall management leadership mentoring coaching all subtly different things that we perhaps want to be looking at um so professional development staff induction training making sure that, the, that we're providing people with the skills that they need to, to do their roles or would fit in within that particular one resources again uh, we, we talk about resources from the sti analyst and we talked about tool sets really um but how we can use uh, the, the tools that are available to us for, for things like workforce management, uh, self-service automation, as, as I mentioned earlier, all of those resources can help us within, within these particular roles. And like on the analyst course, we cover a whole stack of, of, of vital practices and these are perfectly aligned to, to, to why. So there's a few more listed here, which I'll, I'll cover off shortly as in a comparison slide. but. Uh, but and clearly you would expect the service desk manager, the emphasis is, a, is subtly changing here that, that the service desk manager is going to have more of a feed into what the what the processes are in these areas, as opposed to the analyst who who's really being given the awareness of processes because they're there to, to follow those processes, whereas this is all about defining potentially what these, these processes are all about. 
Um, and management information and performance results, uh, there's, a, there's a shift in emphasis towards customer experience, as I've mentioned previously. Um, you know, we, we want to sort of uh, walk in the shoes of our, of our users and understand what, what, ex, what, what kind of experience they're getting from the services that we're providing. So that's, that's a bit of a, an emphasis change across these courses. Um, but also management information and metrics help us with that. You know, we want to be looking at, uh, at measuring performance and having uh, metrics in place to, to support what we're, we're looking to achieve there. So that's the, the service desk manager course content then. So just to, so that, that, that's what's covered on the two courses. So I just thought I'd just kind of a bit of a summary on sort of what has changed. Well, first of all, um, as a sort of a background to what has changed, I think um, it's fair to say that, that, that the world is changing. I mean, we've, we've sort of had a very difficult 12 months with, with COVID and not, not really necessarily just talking about that, but but there is an awful lot changing across the world that, that as, a, as an IT service management community, we're, we're, we're having to, to respond to. Um, and I think it's fair to say that, 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 that more than ever, technology is driving business and therefore um, the, the dependency on high quality IT services is, is ever increasing. So we've sort of seen the emergence of things like uh, Internet of Things, cyber attacks, automation, global collaboration, lots, lots of things on there which, which have, have impacted the way that we provide our, our service management. Um, but effectively what we're saying is business requirements are changing. IT is no longer just a support function there to fix things when they go wrong. We're looking at this key aspect here of digital transformation. We're looking for... Uh, technology to take businesses forward and uh, technological solutions to drive business change um, and that means that the business wants things faster better cheaper from 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 the IT organization and that's why we've sort of seen the emergence of things like um, agile ways of working and, and, and lean approaches and, and DevOps and, and things like that all things which are there to to enable us to to, to, to deliver things in, in a faster uh, creative way and, and I really want to just sort of introduce that as a, as a backdrop to say that the changes that are in uh, that have been incorporated into the, the Services Institute courses are really there to, to reflect that, that that changing world. I mean, we've we've got an adoption of, of of modern ways of working. You know, as I say, those those approaches that I've, that I've just given you examples of agile lead DevOps have come around because we're, we're changing the way that we do things. You know, we're um, I'm showing sure your organisations. You're looking at things like Scrum, and, and and you're looking at collaboration tools as a means of, uh, of uh, of of distributing work, like work backlogs, rather than just incident tickets, and and things like that are, are subtly changing the way that we're doing things. So that's that's had an impact on things. ITIL four has come along, which you know uh, primarily because of the reasons that I've just given. ITIL four has been developed, but it, that's also been a key feed into into the update. Um, customer experience I've, I've covered, uh, you know, that we're looking to, to walk the path of, uh, of our users and understand what, what uh, the service means to them. Uh, automation and, and artificial intelligence. But what we're saying here is uh, an increasing, um, I suppose, movement towards getting the technology to do some of the, 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 the manual work that, that we do. So we can, if we can look for opportunities to automate, that's something that we want to be looking at. If we can look at ways of, of using artificial intelligence to, uh, to, to do things for us, then, then that's definitely increasing in, uh, in, in popularity. Um, and mental health and wellbeing being, has always been a key aspect, but we're getting much more support and general recognition that this is a key area for us. So this has been incorporated into uh, into the Services Institute standard and, uh, and and the associated training courses as well. So um, just to go through those points in a little bit more detail. So when we talk about modern ways of working, effectively what we're talking about is um, that there, ha there has been an emergence of different service management approaches that we can use. There's some examples on there, ITIL, uh, the SDI stuff, ISO uh, 20,000, DevOps, SIAM, Agile Lean. And I think down in recent years, there has often been a, 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 an argument about which one is best for our organization, where actually we really should be looking at, uh, at all of the uh, best practice approaches that are introduced through all of these these various frameworks. And we should be looking to identify what the hybrid approach, 
uh, which hybrid approach is going to deliver the best value for us as an organization and it's likely to be a combination of things and it's fair to say that uh, certainly the the key updates within SDI and ITIL have embraced all of these other areas to truly demonstrate that uh, that there is value to be had in, in in following these approaches and that's that will help us become um, more aligned to, to, to business demand and uh, enable us to, to, to keep up with um, that, that, that increasing dependence that they have on, on IT to become more of a business partner rather than a, a support function, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, mentioned ITIL 4 a few times that this service value system, just, just to sort of demonstrate um, that, that ITIL 4 is incorporated into the Service Desk Institute standard and the qualifications through, through the practices, really. The service value system isn't covered at all, but just some of you may know this, some of you may not, but just uh, because this isn't an ITIL uh, session, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but really I'm just demonstrating here that ITIL 4 has introduced the, the service value system, which is all about the end-to-end -end, uh, response to customer demand right through to, to providing value to them through through all this stuff that we do in the middle and a key aspect of the the stuff that we do in the middle here is the practices that, that we have available to us and, and some of you may not, not be familiar with the term practice but more familiar with the term process so i'm just going to move it on to, to to look at these are the all of the idle practices that we cover in the the idle four framework uh, so okay, i'm Bit of a segue away from SDI for a second, but just to give you a comparison. Um, the ITIL definition of a practice is a set of organisational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. Uh, and actually, to put that into context, uh, if you think of, in a, as a non-IT example, if you think of a dental practice, then uh, a dental practice isn't just about the processes that they use to, to make sure that they, they maintain their, uh, their, their, their client's teeth. Um, and teeth hygiene. It's 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 everything. It's it's the the dentists and nurses that they have in the organisation. The, the 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 tools that enable them to, to take X-rays and record information. Uh, the, the the processes that they use. But all of these aspects form this bigger picture of, uh, of of what's going on within a dental practice. And that's the same thing with with these these practices identified in the ITIL four framework. So incident management isn't just about an incident management process, it's about all of the things that we've got, all of the resources that we've got available to us to help us with the effective resolution of incidents. So that's why we've evolved from processes to practices and, and, that, and the SDI stuff has, has picked up on this. So just to sort of um, bring this to life for you. Uh, so as I say, all of these practices listed on this slide are covered in the ITIL 4 framework, not necessarily the ITIL 4 foundation, and I'll come to that in a second, but in the ITIL 4 framework. These ones which are, um, uh, are covered, uh, indicated with a darker shade, then we cover these practices on both the SDI analyst and the SDI managers course. Uh, they're included in the standards for both of those things. But these four in a sort of a mid shade of blue, IT assets, uh, release management, service configuration management, deployment management, we go into them in more detail on the on the SDI managers. So that, that's really just to, to give you a flavour. And just to really complicate the slide and drop on there what's covered on ITIL 4 Foundation, but you kind of see that there are there, it's not a perfect match. You've got, you've got some things that we cover on ITIL 4 Foundation that we don't cover on the SDI courses and vice versa. So uh, again, it gives you a bit of a flavour that there is a big crossover uh, but there isn't a perfect alignment with uh, with what's covered. So again, uh, you might want to, to to choose accordingly if you're looking at an either or situation in terms of uh, training for, for you or your staff. <coughs> and um, again, one of the other things that's changed is much more of a focus on, on customer experience. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but we just got on the slide there. Uh, an outline of the things that the customers expect from us well, from, a, from a service desk point of view, uh, the level of service that we're going to provide, the customers have expectations of us. We need to make sure that, that we're, we're understanding that customer experience to, to, to best understand their needs. So in this particular section, we can move on to look at how we can put, uh, well, the reason why we put mechanisms in place to, to, uh, to get feedback from, from customers so we can understand how well we're performing. Uh, and we can look at uh, obtaining and recording that feedback. Um, so things like satisfaction surveys, using management information and metrics, defining 
critical success factors, key performance indicators and metrics to help us demonstrate um, performance and, and the customer experience overall is, is, is quite key for us. So that's the emphasis of customer experience, really looking at it from, from the customer's point of view to ensure that, uh, that, that we're aligning our approaches to what's going to deliver the best possible customer experience overall. And as, as we've already said, automation and AI is a, is a, a new within the, the standard and really we're just sort of looking at how we can use technology for, for standard and repeating tasks because there are clear benefits for us for us in doing that and I think the the, the main one is if technology is uh, doing things faster for us uh, then it means that we can free up uh, people to do to, to do much better customer experience activity you know because we're not doing the sort of the manual churn of things that uh, that we could perhaps use through through automation and or artificial intelligence <clears throat> and the last one on the list was was mental health and, and well-being um, again this is just a slide which direct I take from the course I'm not going to go through everything that's covered on there it's there to give you to give you a flavor of, of what's covered but but recognizing that uh, that that, that, that people are stressed. We have to be mindful of, of people's mental health and well-being. It's, it's, it's quite rightly, it's becoming uh, uh, a much more, more relevant topic, or rather, a much more accepted topic. That actually, we need to be able to uh, allow people to uh, to look after themselves from a mental health capacity. Uh, so, so we talk about resilience in the uh, on, on these the training courses. We're looking at trying to to make people more resilient, to provide them with the support that they need. Uh, and try and identify uh, if there are any issues out there of, of stress that we can respond to. And recognizing that you know there's there's this, we're sort of looking at positive stress here as well. In that sometimes uh, it's appropriate for us to apply a little bit more uh, more responsibility, for example, which could lead to stress in a positive way. That uh, that people sort of recognizing that they want to take on board uh, additional stress because it gives them the energy, gives them the career development, and all of all of those aspects. But from a, certainly from an SDI, a service desk manager's point of view, a key part of looking after our team is making sure that we're, uh, we've got their mental health and, and well-being uh, close to our hearts as well. So that's, that's definitely a, a new area added into, into the course. Uh, so what's changed as a, as, as a recap? So I've gone through much of this, but I think it's, it's really the early points on here that we want to get across. Um, service desk analyst quality and professionalism in the modern work environment you know the the, the, the work environment is changing and uh, the, the updates are really there to, to reflect that and uh, one of the things that has been dropped uh, from the analyst course is computing and sort of looking at basic network components think client cloud um, software as a service infrastructure as a service those those types of things because i think that um, the reason for that is that that's kind of leads steering us into a uh, a technical direction when actually we want the emphasis from a services analyst to be more around understanding business requirements, providing good customer service overall. So the technology is perhaps not as important. You know, we, we may well have second line, third line support who's specialist in areas like this. So although we need a bit of an understanding of it overall, we're looking at good customer service as being the key. Uh, from a, an S the service desk manager perspective. So the, the the shift has been an emphasis on leadership skills and and, and uh, people management. So there's the, there's a life cycle approach to recruiting, managing, motivating, and supporting people, which 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 this introduced now. Uh, clear vision and purpose, making sure we've got alignment with with business objectives, business strategy that all forms part of this particular role, uh, and all the other things I've, I've kind of covered off. Managing the customer experience being quite key. Uh, alignment with ITIL4, which we've talked about. Less process focused, more taking a step back and looking at the, the, the practice overall has been, been key to that. In terms of what next? Um, so that gives you a flavour of the the, the, the Service Desk Institute themselves, the, 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 the certification process, the, uh, the, the the training courses that are there to support that. Um, I did say actually um, one thing that's just popped into my head, which I've not covered off. I'm going to go back to the slide, which is some time ago, unfortunately. I didn't mention the exam on the Service Desk Manager. So just to, just to box that off before I move on to what next. Um, so the service desk manager, is like, like the analyst, there's an exam at the end of the course. It's a 90 minute uh, exam, 18 multiple choice questions, and you need to score 52 out of 80 
to, to get a pass, which is 65%. Uh, or if you get 70 out of 80, you actually get awarded with uh, with a mastery level for, for that uh, particular thing. And the, just for a bit of peace of mind and confidence, any trainers who's delivering these courses, they have to pass at the mastery level to uh, to truly demonstrate that they have a, a thorough understanding of, of the topic. OK, moving things back to where we were then. I should have covered that at the time, so apologies for that. So what next? Well, first of all, um, just because I know with these things, some some of you have to dash off and go and do other things. So we always like to capture feedback on how well we've we've, we've done across these these services that we provide. We want to keep doing these webinars, and, and we're always keen to hear of how we can improve and do things better. So I've just posted in the chat there um, a link to to our, our Survey Monkey feedback form. So either have a look at that now, or uh, or when, when I finish talking, it would be great if you could provide us with with some feedback. It'd be much appreciated. Um, I will say that there's a question on there that uh, is kind of one of those horrible questions about whether you want to opt into our marketing communications. And I will just say that the fact that you've all signed up for this session today, um, it will probably be because you've received one of those marketing communications. So if you if you opt out of that then you won't hear about anything that we've got coming up. So I do employ you to, uh, to to consider what you want to do from that. If, if, if you don't want to receive, I mean, we, we send mailers out sort of every uh, every two weeks, maybe two or three weeks. Um, if, you don't, if you feel that's too much, then then feel free to opt out. But if you do want to hear about these events, then then go go ahead and do so. Um, I should have said at the start, somebody's just, just posted a message. I will be providing you with uh, copies of the slides um, feed to review and we are recording this session as well so you'll also get a copy of the recording so you can feel free to distribute it to uh, to your colleagues um, in terms of what next then so training options so as you might expect we offer the the service desk analyst course and the managers course a um, couple of dates there for you to uh, to note in terms of the next physical classroom dates that we've got running. And this is our, our, our training centre. We're based in Haywood, North Manchester. Um, we don't currently have any virtual public dates scheduled, so slightly misleading that there's a, there's a little tick here. Um, but what I want to say is if if you if you are um, if you don't think that you're able to attend Haywood North Manchester, let us know because we're we're looking at trying to generate sufficient demand for us to to offer public virtual dates. So we, we certainly would be willing to look at that in the future. But the reason why it is ticked is because if you have a requirement for your team for any of this training, then we are able to provide it virtually uh, and physically in the classroom as well. That's what the private event at the end is is indicating. We don't have an e-learning option for this yet, but we've got we've got a few options there. So if any of these things are of interest, then uh, drop me a line and, uh, and and we'll be able to, to make arrangements for, for those. Um, I'd like to sort of in, throw special offers at you on these webinars just to to raise your awareness of things that, uh, that we've got at the moment. Focus, we'll start with this, the SDI training stuff, just to say that uh, the, the next two physical classroom dates, you know, we're past the, uh, uh, the, 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 the last government uh, COVID set of dates for, for restrictions to be lifted with these dates. Um, and we're, so we're therefore looking to return to the classroom. Uh, that said, this is in, in Haywood, North Manchester, and we've got special offers on both of those course outings presently so you might want to have a look at that and we've also got some other ITIL4 um, training special offers which if you go on our website um, www.sysop.co.uk there's a big green button special offers go and have a look at that and you'll be able to access all of all of these things so if you are looking at ITIL4 foundation whether e-learning or virtual or classroom or if you're an ITIL version 3 expert, then you might want to be looking at the Managing Professional Transition. And there's a couple of the advanced modules as well that you, you may want to have a look at. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed today and then it's been of, of value to you. The, the, the next webinar that we're, we're hosting happens to be uh, this time next week. Uh, we're, we're, we've got another one running uh, where we're going to look at the Mastering IT Support Delivery uh, Qualification Scheme. and, and, and but very much aligned to the Service Desk Institute stuff, I would say, in that uh, I think that Service Desk Institute and Mastering IT Support Delivery Qualifications are very practical focused. But this this MISD in particular, it talks about the 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 how to of technical work group management and IT support. So there's lots of how tos and pragmatic advice within that. So that 
Mastering IT spot delivery is a qualification scheme in itself, but the, the main thing that we're talking about is the operational management course. So this is aimed at operations managers, um, and we're, we're giving a, an introduction to an approach that we're, we're, we're piloting with this particular course. We're looking at um, a blended learning approach where there's an element of self-study with four half-day trainer-led virtual sessions to, to, to go through the content to provide that, that touch touch back to, uh, to, to the, the subject matter expert. Um, and it covers, this course covers leading a team, orchestrating resources, developing skill sets, developing procedures, understanding dependencies and allying with other departments in the support machine. So all stuff that we're gonna, gonna cover off next week uh, to give you a flavor of, of those things. So if you haven't signed up for this already, then, uh, then feel free to do so. And if you haven't got any information, then feel free to ping me an email or, or stick it on your, uh, your satisfaction survey. Um, and whilst working in the virtual world at the moment, then we have a, uh, a number of uh, online virtual offerings, which I've kind of talked about in terms of the traditional training room. Um, but some of our uh, uh, interactive business simulation, these are typically one day workshops um, that, that are held in a physical classroom where we've got a huge emphasis on team building, but really it's all about demonstrating best practice in action. Um, so it's translating that theory into, into practicalities. Uh, well, we also have business simulations. Now we've adapted them to, to be available in the online world. So for slightly smaller numbers, but they do work quite well. And we've got two, one based on Mars Lander, a mission to Mars, where we look at agile service management aligned to ISO 4 and DevOps approaches. And we've got an Apollo 13 uh, workshop, which is, uh, it exactly follows the Apollo 13 story, actually, in terms of um, those of you, many many of you may have seen the film and, and or know the story um, that there's a, a spaceship in space that's that's going to experience uh, lots of issues and challenges, which as a support team we need to deal with. So this is all about applying traditional uh, ITIL 4 concepts to, to ITSM. So things like uh, incident management, problem management, change management, if you wanted an emphasis in those areas. Then the Apollo 13 would be uh, would be something to good to look at. So you might be uh, you might be interested in, in in those aspects, whether they're online or as we start starting to move towards a return to the physical classroom. Um, so that's me done. The final reminder to say um, if you can provide us with some survey feedback, that would be really useful. Um, but uh, and I'll repost that uh, that link just in case and. Uh, yeah, I'm open to, to the floor, really. I think the only question I've seen as I've gone through was asking me about uh, copies of slides and, and recordings, which I've, I've indicated we have that available for you. So uh, I'll send you all an email this afternoon um, with with the details for, for those, so you can, you can, you can sh feel free to distribute those across your colleagues. Um, there's no other questions coming forward. Does does anybody have have anything specifically to ask? I don't know, I'm sort of on the uh, on the hour here with two minutes to go, so I've probably gone slightly longer than intended. But uh, hopefully, it's all been of value to you. Um, no questions coming forward. Okay, well, I'll, I'll hang fire for for a couple of minutes just in case somebody does uh, does come forward with anything. But I know that some of you will be eager to to dash off now. So if you've got a question, stay on and feel free to ask me. If not, then thank you all for your attendance. Um, hopefully, we'll we'll see you on on some of these uh, these events again, or and or you may want to convert your attendance on this course to uh, to the official qualifications that we've talked about. It will be great to to see you on those events. Okay, guys, lots of thanks coming through. So, no, thank you all again, and uh, have a great weekend. And I'm sure I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Cheers.